everyone. I hope that uh, things are finding you well. Well, today now I'm going to take a look at White Plume Mountain, a model written by Lawrence Schick and published in 1980. Uh, basically, there are three weapons, Wave, Well, and Black Razor, that have disappeared uh, from the city of uh, Greyhawk. Now, the owners of these uh, magical items uh, really want to know what's going on and why have they been stolen. Uh, Cleo turns up, uh, which is a kind of poem, uh, signifying that uh, a person called Caractus has taken them to White Plume Mountain and uh, it's up to the uh, venture party who have been hired to recover these uh, items. And uh, the actual puzzle gives uh, clues about what will happen to the uh, adventurers when they go inside the mountain and uh, basically it's not a very big model uh, in the sense that it's only 16 pages long and uh, dense text uh, and it gives you an uh, outline the first couple of pages and then into the model itself with uh, the usual wandering monsters key and there are full page art artwork which to be quite honest with you is uh, page fillers as far as i'm concerned but it does, uh, in one particular spot, mention Dragotha. Now, Dragotha is a dragon, an undead dragon, which featured heavily, um, at least I think anyway, in the third edition of the, uh, the game, um, where they did a whole stat block, as they call it, of the uh, monster, and uh, it actually featured on either Dungeon Magazine or Dragon Magazine. Uh, memory failed me out to which one it was, but uh, yeah, it became a big thing. The first mention of the uh, Dragotha can be found in this model. And uh, for those who want to know, it's on page 3 at the top part of the map, uh, which you'll find uh, just north of White Plume Mountain. So there's that for the uh, dragon. Um, now, the model in and of itself has lovely uh, uh, encounters and traps in there. Um, it's not a guy that's kill everything that moves uh, kind of dungeon. Um, there are um, places which penalise the characters if they uh, are so stupid as to make um, errors that will punish them. Um, but with a careful play, you can get through the, uh, the dangers of the uh, model towards the end. And this rewards you for doing so. It doesn't sort of kill you whichever decision you make, which is a guy that's trope. There are some uh, weird spots in the model, uh, particularly where you find uh, a set of turnstiles in a corridor. Uh, and there's no explanation offered as to why these turnstiles are there, they just are. So a dungeon master has to uh, come up with a very good explanation to uh, help the confused players, you know. Is it a, a turnstile that allows you to go into an arena to see a football game? So what the hell are the turnstiles there for? Um, these little questions have to be answered uh, by the Dungeon Master. Uh, there are some uh, monsters in there that uh, do uh, sort of clash ecology-wise. Uh, for example, there's a vampire, and uh, what's not to take, you know, stop him taking out most of the creatures living in uh, under White Plain Mountain, and, you know, depopulating the place. Um, <clears throat> but other than that, if you go for long for the ride, uh, you'll find it is quite enjoyable. Um, there are humans there as well, uh, some guards, uh, how he's going to feed himself, especially avoiding the vampire, who knows. But uh, having said that, uh, a lot of it is to do with uh, overcoming the uh, the natural hazards of uh, White Plume Mountain and the traps that have been put in there. Now, uh, once the characters have finally got through the model and survived everything, um, and before I go any further, there is one strange um, place uh, which you find on page 11 where a stream is flowing through the air. You can actually sit on the stream with the kayaks and uh, you go round and around in a circle, uh, going from one room to another and then back in on yourself. And there's fighters and who wait for the people to come through the um, stream on the kayaks and attack them. So a merry uh, go round can be hard with that one. A bit uh, scooby-doo if you think of it uh, that way. You imagine them just going on these, uh, these kayaks and being chased by uh, uh, fighters on the kayak, kayak themselves or attacking as only people wish by. Uh, it's a strange spot, but uh, a bit of fun if you sort of um, just accept it. 
without questioning too hard as to why that is actually put in the module. Now, um, once you've done all this and you've gone through and you've conquered the uh, actual model, overcome the hazards and so on and so forth, um, you think, right, I'm low in hit points now, I'm going to uh, go back to my base uh, outside uh, the mountain somewhere and recover, because surely by the end of that, you're going to be uh, low in spells, low in hit points, low in, on equipment, low in just about everything. And uh, just when you think then you're going to be safely going out, the uh, model writer done what I would call a dick move. Uh, he's introduced two ogres for you to take on. They suddenly appear out of nowhere. And they can be a bit uh, of a tough uh, gig, particularly if you've got uh, very few hit points left. And these guys can probably kill you one smack, one lucky smack perhaps. But, um, no, sorry, not Ogre, my apologies, they're Ifrits, which is pretty tough in and of themselves. And, uh, yeah, you know, that is a dick move. You finally got through, you've done all the hazards and everything. All of a sudden, then, they decide to chuck in two last hazards, especially when you're low on uh, hip points and resources. So that I don't like. Um, I would suggest being a dungeon master checking that little bit out and not really bothering with it unless of course you're a sadist I want to bring misery to your party then by me only bring them in now the uh, um, three artifacts are weapons and they're very very powerful weapons indeed and in fact I think they're a bit too powerful uh, to overwhelm the game and unbalance it especially with Black Razor and uh, it's quite, quite something else you know with telepathy you can have here spell, uh, resistance to charm and fear, um, and it's got a couple of pluses on there. So it's not, um, it's a plus three intelligence sword as well. So it would uh, not be uh, the kind of thing I would allow in the game. And well, you can put it in the game if you want to, but I will actually tone down the power of the uh, Black Razor by a considerable amount so that you don't actually overbalance the game because you can take on just about anybody. Of higher levels and wipe them out. Um, one final note is the fact that uh, the, uh, the the guy who actually created a uh, uh, white plane mountain, Karaptis, now that's a name that we had a lot of play with back in the day. We called him Karaptis. Um, you know, childish though we were, a bit of fun, harmless fun I would say. Yeah, for um, playability side of it, it is really playable. You know, you can uh, do all the bits and pieces in there and come away with a very satisfying game. It does for the Dungeon Master have to read a little bit more than uh, normal because the way the text is put together is quite dense and there's no sort of box outs describing the rooms. Now, do you have to do that yourself? Um, you have to put pencil notes in there, I'm sure, uh, to get yourself keep track of what's going on. Um, but other than that, um, I think both the Dungeon Master and the playing characters will get a lot out of this. And even though it's uh, not a very, very big model in terms of page count, there's a lot going on there that will probably give three, maybe four sessions of play and, uh, and ultimately be a satisfying experience for everybody. Okay, thank you very much for listening. I uh, hope you have a good day. Rock on.